Tough game. Uh, I thought our guys battled, which, they, which they've done consistently. Uh, I thought we were a player or two away from, you know, maybe being able to overcome the deficit and take a lead. And, you know, give them credit. They made the plays and they made the shots that they need to make down the stretch in order to, uh, to close the game out. Obviously, you, you get back in the final minute and you have an opportunity to, you know, take the lead or potentially tie. Mm-hmm. Darius um, looked like he was fouled on a three-point shot. The guy was in his space, obviously. What did you see on that play? Well, I've played this game for a long time. And, you know, I, and I studied this game. That's what we do. And, and you know, I just need an explanation as to, to what happened because I thought he did everything he was supposed to do in that moment. It's, and it's tough for the young man who did everything he was supposed to do. He got to a spot. He lifted Bandango up the ground. Bandango flies into him. And, you know, by rule, I think you're supposed to allow a guy to land and you're not supposed to have contact on the shooter. So, uh, you know, so I, I just need an explanation as to, to what you know, everyone saw. But big play for us. We have a chance to go to the free throw line. We're one of our best free throw shooters. It's a three-point game. He has three free throws coming if that's the case, you know, with time on the, in the game to continue to play. Slow starts have been a mark of this team throughout the season again tonight, first and second half. What do you think leads to that? Well, I think we got to find a way to get easier baskets. I thought tonight to start the game off, we got some good looks. You know, they don't always fall for us, of course, like most teams. But I didn't think our looks were bad early on. I thought we got good looks. We didn't overly turn the ball over. We had under 10 turnovers for the game. You know, we just got to make sure the looks, when we get them, we knock them down and or find easier opportunities. That's why I like to see us get out and run and play in, in, in transition because I know it gives us a chance to get to the basket and maybe get some better opportunities. Back-to-back games now with losses by a single basket. What, do you, what is your message to the team after uh, the, the games like those? Well, we have to stay together. I mean, Big 12 play is tough. You know, we have a a number of games to continue to play, and we have an opportunity to continue to compete and and see what our fortune can be at the end of the season. But what we have to do is take it one game at a time. We can't get to a point where, because you've lost one possession games, that it defeats you. And so we're going to be in those moments some more. What we have to do is we have to change the outcome. You guys got out rebounded 45 to 33, and you guys lost by one possession. How much does it know hurt? Hurt. I'm just like hurt knowing that you guys could have had a rebound that could have given you guys. Well, we've been traditionally a really good rebounding team, and as of late, we haven't rebounded to the level that we need to. I mean, we have a good front line, strong physical front line, and we got our rebound today. I mean, they had 18 offensive rebounds to win by two, and that's that's energy, that's effort. We have to do a better job of of playing with more force so that guys can't can't get to that basket, can't get to an area where they can rebound those basketballs and limit them to one shot. What is the message to the team as you go into the final stretch of conference play? That, you know, there are no limits on what we can still do. I mean, everything we want is still right in front of us. We just have to take it one game at a time and start to build. You know, you can't, you can't build anything if you don't, you don't win one. We have to go out, find a way to compete and win games as we finish out the season and see where we stand to end the conference play. You know, we know it's the Big 12. We know there's a lot of lot of these close games. We've talked a lot about that throughout the season. How, how does, you know, right now maybe going through a stretch where you know, you're not getting the maybe close game luck or, or finding that last play, how do you consistently find that last play uh, to, to, to get over that hump? We just have to play with more composure. I still think for us, you know, we're in these situations enough where we kind of understand what we're supposed to do. We practice these situations as well. So it's not like these situations are unfamiliar with us. You know, we need to make a play. At that time, you know, players make plays, and we need to make plays, you know, and, uh, you know, in position to do that. And that's how you overcome. And that's how we were able to build, you know, win some games early on because at the end we made those plays, and now we have to get back to making those plays again. I know it's maybe not the result you want, but second straight game coming back from a double-digit deficit. What does that say about the makeup of this team, that they, they can still come back? You know, I love our guys' heart. I love our tenacity. Uh, that's something that, that I'll never question. But we can't make this a consistent thing. I mean, you can come back, but I want to overcome. You know, you know, I'm all about winning, and we're all about winning. So there's no more victories and comebacks to me. So our guys got to understand that, and that's, that's, that's my stance, and that's going to be our team stance. Coach, Darius really struggled to kind of get it going in that first half, trying to find any kind of consistency and rhythm. But he looked like he took an onus to take the team, put him on his shoulders, and really get you guys back in the game late. Can you just talk about his ability to do that late down the stretch? Well, I think what he does comes from a good place. You know, we need guys that want to step up and make those plays, you know, whether it's earlier in the game when we get established ourselves or late in the game. And the one thing about him, he's never shied away from that. So that puts you in a position like a coach. You know, when you win or you lose, it's on me. You know, sometimes as a point guard and a guard, you win or lose, it's on you. And that's the nature of the game. But for him, he never shies away from that position. There's a reason why the ball seems to always end up in his hands. 
because a lot of times we're running whatever, but it comes back to his hands because they want to make sure that he's the guy that makes that play or takes that look that says what is the confidence that his teammates have in him. And, and they should because he's not afraid of the moment. Slow starts have been a consistent theme this season. It seems like you guys came out in a different approach in a full-court press to try to get out to an early lead. What was the mindset with that? Yeah, exactly what you said. We wanted to kind of change what we've done to try to get off to a better start. So we decided to put one of our different presses in to try to see if we can't get the tempo the way we want and uh, you know, play the type of game we wanted to play. And uh, I thought at times it was good. I thought we had some defensive lapses in this, in early in the game and gave them some easy looks. But by and large, I, I thought it was the right way to start the game for us. The Bearcats won the battle of the boards tonight, but the particular difference came offensively with Cincy getting 18 offensive rebounds while you got eight. What did you see at the glass there as far as Cincy's offensive rebounds? Well, we have to do a much better job of putting bodies on guys when shots go up, body for body. Everybody has to get contact with somebody and keep them off the boards. That's where you take ownership of your individual matchup. You know, this game is always who's trying to impose their will on who. I think I've said that before. And so you can't let somebody impose their will on you on that floor. And 18 offensive rebounds just said they, they were very hungry and they were trying to impose their will. And we have to, we have to battle back and not allow that to happen. I know you've said every uh, game is a must win, but now three straight losses, you didn't protect the home court. What has to change to break through on the road? Well, we have to, first we have to keep believing. We have to keep believing. It starts there, believing in each other, believing in what we're doing. We can't lose sight of that because we're right there. It would be different if you know these games, the outcomes were a lot different. But these are one possession games at the very end and or two or three possessions at the very end. So we know we're that close. We have to find a way to turn our fortune around by making the plays we need to make to close these games. Well, Cincinnati's coach said that all of these games are one possession games. You've got to win that one possession. What, what's missing from your team that allows you to not do that? Well, I thought – even when we came back, I mean, and we had our opportunities, whether, you know, Darius goes in, I still, like I said, would like an explanation for that because that's one of those possessions that you need where you have a three-point opportunity to shoot three free throws with one of your best free throw shooters. So that's a possession that, you know, you would like back. Uh, we battled back a few times and cut it to, to one, and maybe we'll miss a free throw. So it stays a one-point lead where, where, they, where it's not tied or we can take the lead. You know, a turnover, an untimely turnover at the end, out of bounds under on the side, you know, out of bounds under, and we, we throw the ball away, you know, on a routine inbound play for us where, you know, they made some, you know, some adjustments and they, they really – you know, dug in deep defensively and didn't allow Jalen to get the basketball, but then we turn it. We still have a timeout at that point in time. We have to burn our timeout rather than chance to pass in that situation. See, these are the, those one possessions you're talking about. I think we had it a few times, whether it was up 13, we cut it down to one or two. Up seven, we cut it to one or two. And those one possessions, uh, they become bigger and bigger as the game starts to wind down. Coach, over the course of the past several games, you had a couple of people out, out for games. How big was it for you to have the full starting five back out there? And how big Omar had stepped up there, especially in the front court? There? Well, it was really good to have all of our guys back. They're still rounding into who they're going to be because they haven't been with us in, uh, consistently. But I thought the energy and effort was good. I think it shows some on the boards, though, that they still wasn't who they usually are. I mean, 18 offensive rebounds. When you have Ibrahim out there, you have C.J. Walker out there. Those are two, you know, good rebounding bigs. And uh, we got our rebound tonight. They were able to, like I said, you know, through force, able to uh, to get 18 offensive rebounds. And we just can't have that in this league to be successful. You kind of touched on it, that inbounds play from Darius to Jalen. Did kind of get Jalen turned around, or was it miscommunication from Darius to Jalen, or what happened there? A miscommunication. I talked about in the timeout. They they were going to good, doing a good job of contesting, trying to deny. Of course, Jalen's one of our best scorers. So they're trying to take him out. So, you know, my advice was you make one hard cut, you don't dance around, and you get out of there because if you start dancing, then what's going to happen is I'm guessing where you're going to be. And if you're not there, it could be a turnover. It happened. So it wasn't like we had discussed it in time. I was early in the game. Do not dance. Make one decision, either cut back door or pop out. If you don't receive it, remove yourself from this tether area because it opens it up for another player to receive the basketball. And, you know, of course, being the, the, the competitor he is, I'm sure he really wanted that ball because the play was going to be designed for him anyway, whether he got it inbounds, out of, out, of, out of bounds under, or what we ran was going to go to him anyway. So if he didn't get the basketball, it would have been okay. We'd have run what we was going to run and give him the ball. So we never got a chance to do that, obviously, because the ball got turned over. All set, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, Coach.